Welcome to the Center for Discovery's Integrated Arts Virtual Training Series. My name is Jessica Calabrese and I am the training coordinator of our Healing and Integrated Arts programs. Located less than two hours from New York City, the Center for Discovery is a major research and specialty center that offers residential, medical, clinical, and special education programs to 1,200 children and adults with complex disabilities, medical frailties, and autism spectrum disorders each year. Through this series of seminars, it is our hopes to inspire and teach others about our creative therapeutic programs and learnings and ultimately advance the standard of care for all individuals with complex disabilities. As we like to say, what happens here matters everywhere. My name is Alexa Mickelson, and I am the Director of Adapted Physical Education here at the Center for Discovery. Hi, my name is Lindsay Vitti, and I'm the Director of Assistive Technology at the Center for Discovery. Welcome to our seminar, On the Move, Recreation Bikes for Physical Activity. In this seminar, we will cover some of the benefits of biking and discuss the biking guidelines that we have established here at the Center for Discovery. Riding a bike is a healthy, fun and low impact form of exercise for all ages and abilities. With the use of adapted bikes, most if not all people can ride regardless of ability. For example, some bikes have hand pedals that are powered using your arms instead of your legs. Other bikes have three wheels so the rider can easily balance on them. If someone is learning how to pedal or steer, the adapted bikes make it easier to teach and assist them. Also, because of the constant movement in the pedals while moving on some of the adapted bikes, it helps the students learn the motion after much repetition. Bikes also give direct feedback, meaning if I push with my leg or foot, the bike moves. Bikes help with muscle strengthening and endurance, not only in the legs, but help build a strong core by having riders stabilize themselves while riding. Biking also asks your body to do several things at once. Steer, pedal, engage your core to sit, and keep your balance as well as use your vision to keep your bike safely on the path while not navigating obstacles. It is a full body workout. Next, let's talk about biking guidelines here at the center. To determine if someone can safely participate in biking, we first evaluate an individual's ability to follow simple directions, such as stopping and or staying on a designated surface. We have several team members who are qualified to evaluate individuals for bike use. Our evaluators include physical and occupational therapists, adapted physical education teachers, and rec therapy team members. Our evaluation team members identify the appropriate type of bike and correct supports for each individual. Here at the center, we often use adult-sized tricycle bikes with three wheels. These bikes come in a variety of models, including bikes with back supports, chest supports, typical bike seats with or without waist belts, oversized pedals, and our pedals with straps as well as tricycles with no supports at all. We also utilize stationary bikes with different options that will be covered during another portion of our presentation. After the evaluation is complete, we train our staff members on individual specific needs. We also educate them on how to monitor and cue for speed, direction, and overall safety of the biker who they are supervising. All new staff are trained on our bicycle guidelines and a yearly training occurs for all staff members. This ensures that all of our staff maintain their ability to keep our bike riders safe and to use supportive teaching cues to enhance the skill sets and promote independence for all of our riders. All right. Here we go. Woo! 
Next, let's talk about helmets. Helmets must be worn at all times when riding a bicycle. This includes riding bikes and or tricycles indoors, such as hallways or in a gym space. Helmets must rest low on the individual's forehead with a width of one to two fingers from eyebrows. The chin strap should be adjusted to only be able to fit one finger between the chin and strap. If at any time an individual takes off a helmet, we stop the bike and help the rider put the helmet back on. If the rider refuses to wear the helmet, we do not ride anymore during that session. Some individuals require support to wear a helmet for extended periods of time. In this situation, we build up a tolerance by having the individual practice putting their helmet on their head. Then they can immediately take it off. Since the individual is not on a bike while we are practicing, it removes the pressure to need to wear the helmet. Once they are comfortable with putting it on, we encourage the individual to increase the amount of time they are wearing the helmet by adding a few seconds each time. You can also practice wearing a helmet while the individual is doing a preferred activity. Next, let's talk about pathways. Here at the center, we have designated approved outdoor pathways. We have found some areas and paths not to be safe for our bike riders. For example, if there is a steep hill or an uneven pavement, we do not bike ride on those. We clearly mark them with no biking sign to help remind staff where not to venture. We also encourage our bikers to ride on the center of the pass so that the back wheels on the tricycles do not go off and possibly cause a bike to tip over. If the bike goes off the path, we stop the bike and ask the rider to get off and then pull the bike back on the pavement. We encourage our bikers to ride on flat, paved areas of our campus. Lastly, we require a one-to-one -one biker to staff ratio. We find that most of our riders are still learning and they need prompts ready? to keep pushing with their legs right. and keeping their hands on the handlebars. We also ask our staff to keep one hand on the bike at all times. This helps with keeping an attentive eye on our bikers. And of course, absolutely no phones allowed while biking. on the bike. Check the condition of the bike before each ride, including tires, chains, brakes, seat and straps. If something is not worked correctly, do not ride the bike. Put on helmet. Make sure the brake of the bike is on. Carefully ask individual to sit on bike. Bike should properly be sized for the individual. They should be able to push in a full rotation without locking their knees and be able to reach handlebars comfortably. If riding a two-wheeler, they should be able to reach both feet to the ground comfortably while sitting on seat. For our adapted bikes, we fasten the waist belt if we deem this necessary. And finally, we apply the foot straps, again, if deemed necessary. Before unlocking, we double check that brakes and tires are in good working condition. Then we unlock the bike, asking individuals to keep hands on the handlebars and off we go. <laughs> Encourage individual to push independently. If they are a beginner, they might need a lot of assistance until they learn the motion of the bike. You might need to push on their quads to help them understand where they are pushing from you might have to give the individual verbal reminders to push the legs. The more practice and time on the bike, the more proficient they will become. Reminders to keep hands on the handlebars are usually warranted. When you get to a turn or bend, you can teach turning by verbal cues using left, right, turn towards the blank, 
like a tree, turn towards me, or by hand over hand guidance. The bikes with bars on the front or side help with this can help you guide them through the turning process. Give tons of reassurance and motivation. Good job, Lauren. There you go. And lastly, make things fun. <laughs> Sometimes changing paths or scenery helps motivate. Sometimes consistency is key. Knowing your individual and what they prefer will help them bike successfully. Talk about what you see on the bike ride. Maybe set a goal. How long will you ride? How far will you ride? What is the weather that day? Are you able to safely ride with a friend? Maybe you can incorporate lessons into your ride. Can you incorporate speech into your ride? Maybe stop the bike and ask the rider to say go or stop or use their communication devices to say it. Getting off the bike. First, make sure you are in a safe spot to get off. Second, stop the bike and lock the brakes. Remove both feet straps if they were used. Unfasten any waist belts or chest straps that may have been used as well. Ask the individual to come off the bike to the side. You may need to hold their hands or assist them in swinging their leg over the middle of the bike. Once the individual is safely off the bike, cue or assist them in taking the helmet off. We also have a variety of indoor biking options. These include standard recumbent and indoor exercise bikes. Due to our climate, these are beneficial for year-round exercise in both the residential and classroom settings if an outdoor pathway is not available for riding. We also use bikes with screens that interact with our individuals. These allow them to feel like they are flying with dragons or finding hidden right, treasures to motivate them while riding. Go. They get sensory feedback through the handlebars and pedals while riding that match the video that they are seeing for a fully engaging experience. This also allows us to track riding on a daily basis. We can make goals based on the riding. Also available are a variety of therapeutic riding devices. These allow individuals who require a more supported seating surface to remain in the comfort of their wheelchair, and these devices can assist as needed to move their arms or legs through the available cycle. They can sense tone or if a person needs to stop and brake and will stop and reset for a safe movement experience. As mentioned before, all new staff are trained on proper setup and a yearly training occurs for all staff members. This ensures that our staff and users feel confident and safe. Adaptations can be made as needed at the user or staff's request or to reassess positioning or use. Does riding the Moto Med make you feel better? Yeah. How much better does it make you feel? Uh, maybe better, better. When a bike doesn't exist, our therapists and teams work closely with our in-house assistive technology department to develop their ideas into prototypes of working models so that everyone can have an opportunity to move. In this model, the user can remain comfortably seated within their custom wheelchair. The chair attaches to the bike and they can use their arms to propel themselves forward and move.
Thank you for joining us today. Biking is an integral part of life here at the Center, and we hope you've enjoyed our seminar.